Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video. You want to know where I am, don't you? Well, hang on a minute, and I'll turn the camera down. Turn the camera round. As we pan down, it's rather attractive cobbled lane. And there's the old master, which you've seen a few times now. And you want to know you want to know where I am. Well, I am in the beautiful city, beautiful town probably of Belper. And Belper is in the old English county of Derbyshire, one of the first counties to be discovered actually when the Normans came to uh, Britain in uh, 1966. And the reason I'm here uh, is my friend Kirsten has the house, the house behind me which is in Belper, which is available on Airbnb. And I booked it for a couple of nights, no special offers. I booked it through the proper channels, paid the full rate, no mates discount, nothing like that. But I'm going to stay here for a couple of nights and I'm gonna do some cycling and I'm gonna take you with me. Did you expect anything less? I will leave a link in the video. So if you want to book for a period of time, a night, a couple of nights, a week, even longer, at Kirsten's house in Belper, you'll be able to do so. So I'm about to head out now on my first ride, I'm going to switch the Wahoo on, and um, got the gravel bike, yes, yeah, got the Fairlight Seacam, which I'll have, we'll have a closer look at once we're out on the road. So come with me and enjoy the beautiful countryside of Derbyshire. Well, I left Belper and immediately went into a 20% climb. I mean, what the hell is going on? Last week I was in Malvern, slogging up 20% climbs. Earlier this week I was in uh, Dorset, slogging up 20% climbs. And here I am in Derbyshire. And what am I doing? I'm bloody well slogging up 20% climbs. Now, I don't know if you can see, because the old GoPro is not good showing things in the distance but we're looking down a hill to a row of houses a village running along there I don't know what village it is but it is very very attractive um, car coming past but there's not been many cars I've seen two two cyclists and I saw a little old lady uh, pushing one of those wheeler trolleys up a 20% climb and I kid you not she was probably going faster than me now I'm heading towards a place called the Black Rocks I don't know if you can see there's a kind of you probably can't because it's bloody GoPro but um, there's a kind of escarpment is that what you call it? an escarpment of rocks just there which could be where I'm heading and if it is it means some more 20% climb. So this is Julian Glutton for punishment. Just about signing off. A couple of cars coming past. You want to see me? Where am I? Uh, the Vulpine Merino jersey today, since you asked. That cask, 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 cask helmet. And as I said, the old Fairlight sea can here. If you want to see sea can, then you shall find. I'll keep on making that joke. Well, here I am at Black Rocks at this steep path, which I had a go at cycling and spoke to some people. I said, Is it doable? And they said, Well, I wouldn't try. I said, well, I'll have a go. And uh, I, well, I got about 50 yards up. But the trouble was there were sort of cement. Um, not, not exactly uh, steps, but sort of like very wide cement steps with quite a big drop. So uh, the bike pretty much stalled on those anyway. So uh, that's my excuse for... And not cycling but uh, oh I'm gonna turn the camera off turn it on again when I'm a bit closer well here are 
the black rocks and they're, they're pretty forbidding aren't they it's difficult to get an idea an accurate idea of scale really but just as a that's my finger there so if you imagine my finger is very close and the rocks are about oh, I don't know 60 or 70 yards away or so does that give you an idea of scale I'm not sure it does really and then there's this kind of this kind of scree slope here which I might try and cross in a minute to get a little bit closer to the rocks. They're pretty impressive, aren't they? Pretty impressive. And so we see the massive, massive expanse of black rock or black rocks. Uh, so called, one assumes, uh, because they are actually pretty black or, or very dark. I don't know what colour you'd call that actually sort of a bit darkish grey they're not really black um anyway they're called black rock so decide for yourself leave a comment down below why do you think they're called black rocks i'm sure somebody will know the answer a lot of, a lot of folks here in the fair light sea can on this trip i hope it doesn't continue like that people are going to get bored nice bike but i mean come on it's just a bike not about the bike, as Lance Armstrong said. It's about what you put in your body. I'll go along with that. Well, that should give you some idea of scale because here is the Fairlight Sea Can, as you can see. And then there is this great big rock here, which is probably about, uh, it's difficult to tell, uh, 15. 15, 20 feet maybe, something like that. It's a big old rock anyway. Pretty impressive. I think you'll agree. Um, whether I'll be able to get down, of course, is another matter. And if I can't get down, what they will find, the rescuers, when I'm finally rescued, if I'm finally rescued, of course, is uh, a 65-year-old man wearing a vulpine uh, blue uh, jersey. Uh, carrying a GoPro with some film in it and a rather mysterious commentary and uh, people say who is this who is this person found like uh, Marlow not Marlow, Mallory on Everest, yes they did find his body eventually uh, nicely, very well preserved because of the ice and the snow here we are do you want to see the fair white sea can or do you want to see the rocks? Both, I suppose. So Black Rocks is on the High Peak Trail and the High Peak Trail is a cycling route so I think I'll follow that cycling route across to Cromford Canal which is right here on this map. So we'll see how we get on. Now I think I'm riding along this old, this old railway line which is part of the High Peaks Trail as you can see as we pan round across the valley looking down to a, a village just down there nestled nestled in the valley and there you can see the village itself beautiful derbyshire village i assume as we're in derbyshire although what the name of it is i'm not sure there's a lady in a pink dress there with a dog i could ask Ask her. So I can even ask the dog. You never know in Derbyshire. The dogs belong to the tourist information centre. Beautiful bucolic. Is that the word bucolic scene? This little patch of daffodils here beside the path. And there a little patch of water. Well, I may shortly stop and fill my bottle because I'm getting a little thirsty. All right, we come to sheep pasture incline, and this is apparently one in eight. And the sheep were dragged up the incline um, using an engine located in that building there, which closed in 1967. Um, why? Why the sheep were pulled up the incline, well, I mean why they couldn't walk, uh, is not explained. 
uh, Arkwright, uh, not the character played by um, uh, Monty Barker in, was it, uh, what was it, Open All Hours? Was that Arkwright? Anyway, no, not that Arkwright. Arkwright, I think, was the inventor of the spinning jenny, although I'm not 100% certain about that. I expect some of you may need to look it up on Wikipedia and leave a comment down below when you get the answer. It says here, cyclist give walk a horse. Not sure what that means. It might mean something in the Derbyshire dialect, uh, which is only spoken by uh, two people, um, myself and the little old lady who um, I saw pushing her walker up the 20% in climb, which is why we were, we, were, we were able to exchange pleasantries. At least I think they were pleasantries. She may have known a bit more of the Derbyshire dialect than I do. Anyway, shall we head off down the hill and see if we come a cropper? We'll see. Mind you, if we go down the hill, we've got to come back up it. Have I got a choice? Probably not. I think it leads to Matlock eventually. Eventually, Mr. Forty. This is an amazing sight here in this clearing. Uh, I don't know if you can see, I'll focus in on it. But this is obviously part of the uh, the engine mechanism that would have been used to haul the, the sheep up the incline. You can see a kind of you can see a pulley wheel there and some cables held up by these remaining wooden, heavy wooden dark dark stanchions. The uh, camera tends to uh, lighten the scene far more than it really deserves because it's really quite quite forbidding, quite foreboding this scene. Very attractive though, very interesting. So we've reached the bottom of that steep incline and this is the uh, High Peak Junction Workshops, and there is I think one of the, the early railway carriages. This is one of the earliest uh, railway systems. It's very interesting the way it worked. It was uh, uh, there was a kind of railway system on high, and then there was a railway system down below. So of course they had to work out a system where they could join those. And so the wagons were dragged up that incline, which I just came down, uh, to be attached to the railways at the top. Uh, and then the railways at the bottom would continue on their route. And it was a very important uh, route for the coal from Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire uh, to then be able to get to Manchester. So there's some ingenuity people had back in the 1960s. I'm cycling along beside the Cromford Canal and uh, there's a quite overwhelming smell of human excrement just back there and I uh, couldn't work out what it was. Well, I mean, it was obvious what it was, but um, then I looked over the side. Thank you. Uh, looked over the side by the railway line there there was a sewage works so uh, I suppose that explains the overwhelming stench of human excrement because if there's any place that you're going to find that or smell that it's at a sewage works isn't it? I mean who'd have thunk it? In this beautiful bucolic, idyllic, woodland, Derbyshire scene, the faeces are all around us. Suck on that, as they say, or not. Cute little ducks in the canal, no doubt feasting, paddling, swimming through excrement.
The excrement to the left of us, the excrement to the right of us, the excrement as far as the eye can see. I suppose the thing about a canal, of course, is that the water doesn't really flow. It's rippling here because the ducts have stirred up the shit, but the canal water generally doesn't flow, does it? It's still. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed that before. Maybe it's just me. And of course, canal water doesn't go anywhere, does it? It's just there. Like, uh, like Tory politicians, they're always around us. The political infiltration there. A couple of geese. Now, you'll know my thoughts about geese. All the geese in the country are owned by the Queen. Did you know that? The Queen owns all the geese. Uh, Prince William owns all the uh, ducks. Uh, Prince Harry did own uh, all of the chickens, but obviously he relinquished that particular form of ownership when he, uh, when he fled to California. And um, Prince Andrew owns all of the all of the turkeys. Yes, all of the turkeys. Actually, what are you talking about, Julie? These aren't geese at all. Uh, I, there was I thinking these were the Queen's geese, whereas in fact these are Prince Harry's swans. So, uh, what what shall we call them? What about Bob Jimmy on the left and Jimmy Bob on the right? So uh, I wonder if they've met Harry. I wonder if all the swans meet Harry. They go to a kind of swan garden party at um, wherever it is, and then they all they all shake hands, and then um, and then the swans get eaten. I suppose not much of a life. Still not much of a life for the royal family. Some would say, but not me. Come across this fine stone bridge over the canal. Isn't that nice? I'm about to go through it in a minute. You haven't seen me? God, you haven't seen me, don't you? I just, um, <coughs> I just passed two ladies. And I said to them, did, did I not see you up at Black Rocks? And one of the ladies said, yes. So I started chatting with them, because I wanted to find out how they got here, sort of before I did, when they're walking, and I'm obviously cycling a lot quicker than them. Anyway, I had a little discussion. It turned out they weren't the same two ladies at all. So I said, well, why did you say you recognised me? And she said, well, I was just being polite. And then I was asking them where they went. And I, the other lady said, uh, it goes to Cromford. I said, what's that? She said, it's a village. I said, what's it like? She said, there's a couple of little pubs. I said, you must be from Derbyshire, because I don't talk like that. I'm from London. And she said, yeah, I'm Derbyshire born and bred. Couple of little pubs. So I'm going to practice that, saying couple of little pubs. Because then when I get back to Belper, which I assume is also in Derbyshire and where they talk funny like that as well. I might be able to get in with the locals by, if, I, if they just ask me any sort of questions, where you come from, I'll just say couple of little pubs and they'll think he's a Derbyshire boy. Yes, so he is. Anyway, not the same two ladies. So will I come across those two ladies? And if I do, will they also claim that they recognise me even if they don't? I wonder if that's a Derbyshire thing. I need, I'm going to need to be on my guard. Nice bridge though, isn't it? What do you think? Well, this is Scarfin Books in Cromford. And I'd really like to go in and browse. But if I do and I find some books that I quite fancy, I can't really carry them back because I didn't bring a bag. But uh, you can see the a fair light there in front of the bookshop. Which just goes to so cycling and reading goes together like Matt Hancock and Gina Collard Angelo. Rough winds do shake, sometime too hot. If that's a reference to uh, the great, great Hancock, great Collard Angelo. Or maybe not, or maybe not. We're coming to the end of the High Peaks Trail and this Find the stone house here. And looking back, you can see the old, you can see the chimney there with the pumping house that pumped the water from the canal up to uh, the river, from the river to the canal, one or the other anyway. 
here we can see the canal which is so green and covered in algae uh, it almost looks like looks like tennis court doesn't it, it looks, it looks like Wimbledon imagine Roger Federer Novak Djokovic of course not Federer because he'd been knocked out but uh, Rafael Nadal Novak Djokovic well not Nadal of course because he's not playing um, they step out onto the green swards is it swards or is it swathes whatever it is of Wimbledon ready to begin their knock up and then oh there's a big splash and it turns out they're not on the green green grass of Wimbledon at all they're on the algae covered Cromford Canal and they come a cropper within the greenness and the wetness and the Robinson's barley water there's nothing to see above the water except a couple of waving racket hands and a, uh, and a sweatband well, the mighty fallen. This is called Sims Wharf, by the way. Uh, Mr. Sims uh, is still here, uh, still uh, still working hard. 140 years since he first started. Been on furlough for the last few months though. This section of the path is pretty deserted. The previous section. It's pretty busy, and uh, it's a it's a kind of footpath, but with a concession for cyclists. I think what concession means is that the walkers generally don't get out of your way, and they do insist on walking side by side on the narrow path like this. So you're constantly going along saying, "Thank you, thank you, excuse me, thank you." Oh, you deaf bastard! Can you get out of the way? Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, no, that wasn't me who said that. Yes, thank you, thank you. And it makes me wonder, or rather it can make it makes me see the benefit of having a bell. And preferably a great big fucking bell, like a big Ben bell. Um, that ideally you can ring, and then as you ride past them, you, you whack them upside the head. Who, who had a hit with that song, Upside Your Head, Upside the Head? Because whoever it was, we release it, and it'll be a big hit. I've got to be honest, I'm not quite sure where I'm going. Um, the route is telling me there's 7.7 .7 miles to get back to Belper, so uh, not far at all. If you are staying in Kirsten's very fine, very nice house in Belper, I can highly recommend uh, particularly this trip to Black Rocks and if you're on a bicycle this uh, ride beside the canal or if you're walking uh, plenty of walks in the Belper, Derbyshire, Dales, Peak District kind of area so an ideal place for a vacation can't recommend it highly enough haven't seen inside the house yet but uh, that's going to come soon as soon as I get back there I expect I'm going to have to do some climbing before I make it there but my legs my legs are ready are my legs ready? I don't know. Well, we'll have to see. We're about to enter and go through the Gregory Tunnel. This is interesting, isn't it? Oh, blimey. A little bit, a little bit dark. I can know. It's pitch dark. Oh, shit. I don't, I don't like this. I can't see anything. I don't know if you can see anything on the GoPro. Just imagine. I mean, I'm not peddling now, as you may have guessed. Just imagine if I came across a great big sinkhole that had suddenly opened up in this park and I disappeared down into it. Fairlight sea can, uh, Vulpine jerseys, La Fasoni gravel shorts. And, uh, yeah, I just, you know, they, they found me in a thousand years, preserved, like, is it Pilt Down Man or something? Um, and they said, look, what's that? And somebody would say, it's a gravel bike. And I said, no. Do people really fall for that kind of thing? And yes, I'm afraid we did. We all bought gravel bikes and we loved them too. You know, I do think this, this, this is the two, this is the two, the same two, same two ladies that I saw earlier.
or maybe not. All two ladies look alike to me now. I bet he made it through the tunnel without getting off. He's a tough old mountain biker there. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Debbie must be. She's in Northampton. What are you doing checking on her? I may have said this before. And in fact, I have said this before. I know I've said this before. But one of the things about having a gravel bike is you can just disappear, not disappear, but you can uh, track on to these kind of uh, canal side, riverside paths without worrying or well, without being concerned about, oh, I'm going to get a puncture, is it going to be slippery, something like that. Now, I'm not saying you can't do it on a road bike. Of course, you can do it on a road bike. But there are always some sections where you think, well, maybe. Maybe it's going to be a little bit crunchy underfoot and I don't want to risk getting a puncture. But um, of course, if you're like this character here, who's obviously in training for a triathlon, I mean, you don't care about things like that. You just, you just stamp along on the path in your Asics or your Adidas or your Nike, or the shoe brands are available. And you don't worry about getting a puncture because your feet don't puncture. Might get a splinter, might get a cut. You get a, might get a scratch, might get a deep graze, uh, but they don't get a puncture like tyres do. Although my tyres, of course, don't get punctures because I'm using tennis tyre inserts. We'll see some more of the uh, courts at Wimbledon. There you are. Uh, no Federer, I'm afraid. He's drowned. No, he's not drowned, but he's out. And there you can see the dappled, the dappled sunlight, casting, casting shadows on the surface of the lawn. Not lawn. It's not a lawn. It's a canal. Canal side. Incidentally, I was going to say, I'm trying out some new pedals. Now seems as good a time as any to tell you about them. And here they are. I don't know if you can see, but they are in fact. SPD pedals, but shaped a bit like uh, look pedals. See, they're SPD mountain bike cleats, but with a wider, see that, kind of spinning around now, but a kind of wider platform for your foot. So if you want to vote about whether you think I should use these pedals for the jog, please feel free to do so. You don't have to vote. You don't win anything if you vote. Don't win anything if you don't vote. Oh boy, I don't know if I can cope with all this climbing. I came up a... Well, I know I'm prone to exaggeration, but this was somewhere between 20 and 25% uh, as an average. And uh, boy, did I struggle. I stopped once. Uh, actually, I stopped twice. I stopped once because I thought I had to. Now I stopped a second time because the commute told me I was going off route. Although, in fact, I wasn't. So I just continued up to the top. Um, now I saw a sign for a tramway museum, which is actually open in August, closed at the moment. And then I saw this sign to this memorial tower um, to regiment, I think it's the Sherwood Foresters and the Worcestershire. I'm not 100% certain about that. My heart was pounding too much when I was reading the sign. So I think all the blood has gone from my memory and gone to Want to try and help me breathe, frankly. Um, anyway, it's another one of these fabulous views. And from up here, uh, they say you can see six counties. So let's see if we can do that. There's uh, that's Shropshire, that's Devon, that's Surrey. That's uh, Rutland. Is that still a county? A little place. That's uh, Yorkshire there. That's, uh, what's that? What's that funny one? Norfolk. And then that one there, just on the edge of what you can see, is actually Sussex. Only West Sussex. You can't see East Sussex from here. You have to get a bit higher up for that. So uh, I'm just continuing to sort of stand and pan, pan and stand because that's about all I can manage at the moment. I can hardly, hardly breathe, actually. Can you see me? 
I mean, I'm sweating like a bastard. I shouldn't use words like that in front of this memorial tower, but I think there's anybody around. Actually, there's a gardener, but he's too far away. He can't hear me. But I am seriously, I'm sweating like a bastard. I'm the only person here. Do, would you? Are you surprised? Even walking up, you need walking poles like my mate Colin. And uh, I struggle. You, you, you say, come on, Jenny. You've got a 40-42. More than one-to-one. -one. Well, is it less than one-to-one? -one? It's more than one-to-one, -one, isn't it? And still you're struggling on these hills. Well, I'm, I'm 65. Don't know if I told you that. I'm 65. Lost a bit of weight. Yeah, thanks for asking. But uh, I, I don't have the strength of some of these people. Maybe you do. You try the climb. See how you like it. Big man. Big woman. But, but, no, I didn't mean that. Well, you know what I mean. Peaceful, though, isn't it? Peaceful. Peaceful and quiet. And six counties. Count them. Well, you, you can count up to six, of course. And here is the memorial tower from the other side. And very impressive it is, too. I've put the camera on this, uh, they call it a trig post. And there's a, a sign on the memorial saying people have been cutting through the fence behind the trig post and climbing down and climbing up. So it's not only extremely dangerous, it's disrespectful. And so it is. Why are people such, such idiots and tossers? Ah, oh, well... What can you say? Have you seen all the counties? Count them. Well, I'm back. Boy, boy, oh boy, oh boy, are there some tough climbs. And this, you will know if you've watched the video about Dorset, that I went to Gold Hill in Shaftesbury with cobbles and I couldn't get up it. Got up this. Cobbles are much worse, although it's not nearly as steep, but still, rackety rack. Anyway, back here at Kirsten's place in Belpa, and you'll want to know the numbers. So let's hone in, let's see if we can see the numbers. Not even sure I can see. 21.6 miles, 2 hours 47 minutes. And 18 seconds ride time, 2,250 feet of climbing in 21 miles. And I tell you, it felt like a lot more. So, a fine day's riding here in Derbyshire, and you'll never guess what the neighbours just told me. Mark Cavendish has won in Carcassonne 34 stages, equaling Eddie Merckx's record. What a man, what a rider! He is. So all is right with the world. Wash and a scrub up. Something to eat, I think, and then back out on the road tomorrow. Thanks for watching. See you next time.